Hey guys, how are you? Welcome back to my channel. It's me, Steven. I am at the employee parking area. You can tell Duncan's was open, thank God. Happy New Year's. I am off to New Orleans this morning, one leg. The rest of the trip is kind of rough, but the first day is very easy. Uh, just one leg to New Orleans. We're there by 11.30, something like that, noon. I've got a uh, 19-hour layover, I think. Then we're going to head off to L.A., but we stopped somewhere first. I forget where. But I need to get inside. I only have about 50 minutes before I have to check in and getting through KCM and blah, blah, blah. So I will see you in the airport. Random through security. No surprise. I think one thing I'm going to try and keep in my journal that I'm going to try and keep is how often I'm random. Just for kicks. Because it's, it's a lot. Hey guys, how are ya? Welcome to New Orleans. It's very chilly and kind of gray and cold in the room as well as outside. They had the temperature set to 65 and uh, too crazy, too cold. Um, it is gray and overcast side. The airport is right over there. The weather isn't fantastic, so I'm certainly not going to go into the French Quarter. Um, I've been there dozens of times. It's nothing new. Uh, if I go back down there, it'll be during warmer weather. I was immediately taking off my uniform because I just, oh, get it off me today. Um, let's see what else is going on. My flight was very nice today. My flight was very, very nice from Las Vegas. My chaser's amazing. Super, super chill, nice energy. She's pretty. She's nice. Um, just an easy, easy person to work with. Uh, and then my, my crew is awesome. My main crew is awesome. I am in the middle in terms of seniority. The senior gentleman, uh, he flew C, so I'm flying up in front as lead. And um, uh, Hunter, who is our position B, he's off probation in like another 10 days or something. Super nice guy, super sweet, really nice crew. Uh, and today was super easy. One leg to New Orleans. A little bit of bumpiness, nothing crazy. Uh, the one odd thing, because there's always something that happens on the plane. Um, we uh, got up, we were doing service, and row 13, I think, ordered a cup noodle. Not unusual. We sell cup noodles on the plane. Five dollars. <laughs> More, I think, right now. Uh, and then right behind them, there's a family of 14 and they all ordered noodles. We had to make 15 noodles. I made like six or seven. My other coworker made the rest. Um, but yeah, they all ordered noodles. Craziness. Now, some flight attendants will tell you they hate pouring Diet Coke because in these little teeny cups filled with ice, Diet Coke foams up. And so you kind of have to pour a little, wait for it to die down, pour a little, wait for it. Every time you do that for a Diet Coke. For me, it's not Diet Coke. Uh, it's making noodles. Oh, I hate it. Uh, and of course, 15 noodles in the course of just a few se seat sections. Craziness. But that's the most unusual thing that happened on the flight. So I should count my blessings, right? Okay, so um, 19, uh, 19 hour layover. Uh, my plan is really to spend most of the time on my laptop because again, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to go out there. It's too miserable outside. So um, I will see you guys tomorrow. Vlogmas is kind of over. I, this is not going to be a separate video. I'm going to do a whole regular trip video. So I'm sorry if you got addicted to Vlogmas. I'll see you tomorrow. Hey there. Hi. So it is 731 in the evening, still in New Orleans. I was sitting here playing Starfield on my laptop and I heard my phone go and, and um, I looked at my phone and my coworker said, oh, there's a free meal for us. They're comping us dinner because it's the, the holiday, it's New Year's. And so we all rushed downstairs to get our meal. And boy, this looks great. Oh my God, hold up, look at this, wait. It is chicken and stuffing and cabbage and cheesecake. And they gave us a soda. I am very excited. Well, that's breakfast. <laughs> um, I guess I, I don't even know what that is. That's not bacon, but I feel it looks like strips of um, shoes that I would buy at Goodwill. The fr the potatoes are like hard. They've been sitting here for so long. They set breakfast out here at uh, two a.m. and that stuff's been there since two a.m. Cutlery over here. All right. 
At least hopefully they have coffee. Well, that's my breakfast after I ate. Oh my God, it was awful. Oh, I am not at my best right now. I have to really pull myself together and try to be a human being. Um, breakfast was inedible, inedible, inedible. Um, it reminded me a lot of uh, first season Star Trek. If you're if you're old enough to remember, the styro the food was like little styrofoam blocks. That's exactly what it looked and felt like in your mouth. Awful. Um, I had some toast and I have some coffee sitting over there, cooling off a little bit. So I have to pull myself together because I've had literally no sleep. Food was horrible. Um, but I love my job, I love my job, I love my job. So I'm gonna try my best to be <clears throat> optimistic and positive. I'm not sure why I'm sharing the negative with you and not my coworkers, but it's probably better this way. <laughs> All right, I'll see you soon. So everybody is out trying to find something to eat or some coffee or something. This is just really very little to offer in this airport considering how large it is. Uh, so I'm the first one down to the plane. We don't start boarding until 9.33. It's 9.05. So I'm going to do my checks, sit down and close my eyes for a few minutes. So I will see you in Atlanta. Me again, still in Atlanta. Um, it seems one of our seats is in up, but we are oversold. And I don't know if the gate agent knows about it. So rather than have that be a problem during boarding. We also need maintenance for a broken flashlight seal. So I'm gonna head up and talk to them. Hey guys, hi. So welcome to Atlanta. Um, our lavatories don't work under 16,000 feet because there's some sort of va vacuum problem. Um, there you go, thank you. Um, so, yeah, so we, the captain was kind enough to make sure that we'd be able to get off the aircraft and use a laboratory here in Atlanta before we, you know, move on. Uh, so that's nice. Um, I am barely holding myself together. I did not sleep at all last night. And I, I was all set because, you know, it's a very comfortable room. I had plenty of time. Late morning check-in. It was so nice. But the, my next-door neighbor snored to a degree that was infuriating it didn't stop until it did and then it's like oh, 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 and then back to snoring again um if you're a flight attendant do you know what an lrbl is a least risk bomb location if you don't know if you're not a flight attendant it's if there's a bomb on the plane <laughs> we have to think about this where do we put it if we can move it and then how do we move from there so that we reduce the risk of someone being injured by an explosion? We have to think about things like this. So it's called an LRBL, a least risk bomb location. Uh, so uh, I literally, uh, and part of, part of preparing an LRBL is using luggage and clothes and wet material and, and plastic bags. We have to set up a whole thing. Um, and we have to do it every recurrent. We have to set this up every recurrent. So um, I literally set up an LRBL in my hotel room against the connecting door because the sound was so loud. Just to dampen the noise, I had to um, try to literally put my luggage and all my clothes and everything against the door. It was incredible. But um, yeah, that in conjunction with not sleeping and then breakfast, um, horrible, horrible, but uh, one more leg and we're done for the day. I will see you there. Hi. Oh, I'm tired. <laughs> you know when a toddler starts to cry and just throw a temper tantrum because they're just tired? That's what I feel like. In my heart of hearts, I just want to throw a little temper tantrum. I'm so tired. Uh, but I threw a temper tantrum this morning with you, or didn't I? Um, so today was very long. So we had, uh, I had zero sleep last night. None. My neighbor, whoever it was, needs to go to a doctor. Um, it was horrible. I mean, the walls were vibrating. Uh, but, uh, and then breakfast was just inedible. It was just awful. My chaser and I were laughing about the food. It was hard, like tank, tank on the edge of the plate. 
the French toast sticks that looked delicious were like little like bricks tink, tink. on the plate. Um, am I making any sense? But um, yeah, so um, it, the day improved with a little bit of coffee, so that was good. Um, our passengers are fantastic today. Thank God there were no real big issues. The the uh, first flight of the day was a little bit somber. When they were boarding, they were very sad. My chaser and I just felt like, well, what's wrong? Like, we started our trip on New Year's Day early in the morning on New Year's in Las Vegas, where people are like destroyed after New Year's Eve, right? And they were all chipper and happy and smiling and ready to go. This group out of New Orleans, they were somber. They were very, very sad. It turns out there was a big football game, like a college football game, and I guess Texas lost. Who knew? But there were a lot of Texas fans on that flight, and they were all very upset. Um, our captain thought that was hysterical, that a college football team uh, loss uh, would affect the passengers so deeply, because he even noticed, but... Uh, I'm not a college football fan, so I don't know why it would affect them so so much. But uh, the Washington fans apparently were very happy, though, uh, so they won. Um, and the other funny thing that happened today, uh, the high point of the day, besides my chasers, uh, we were finishing up our last leg of the, the first leg of the day. Uh, passengers are deep cleaning, and there was a kind of a bottleneck, so people were stopped in front of us. And this tall, handsome, very like Northern European, oh, so handsome, so stylish, he uh, pauses and says, hey, you know, uh, I'm a linguist. He studies languages and uh, with his beautiful little accent. And he says, uh, he asked me where my accent was from. And I said, oh, it's gay. And he, he's, like, he's like, what? I know. And he's like, where? I said, it's, it's gay. And he's like, I don't understand. And my chaser didn't either. And then it dawned on her. She started laughing. And I said, I'm, I'm originally from Boston, but my gay accent is dominant. And he, fig he figured out that I wasn't, I wasn't trying to be like, uh, sarcastic. It's just the truth. Cause don't I sound gay? I sound gay. Everyone in high school knew that I sounded gay. So I figured, why doesn't everybody else? So he just thought that was absolutely hysterical after he got it. <clears throat> and I laughed, but I wasn't really kidding. <laughs> um, I just always assume people understand that I have a gay accent. Um, but uh, what else is going on today? I think that was, was that it? I, there was something else. I forget. I forget what it was. Oh, we had our lavatories. The lavatories were a problem. Some vacuum valve or something wasn't working. So our, our lavatories wouldn't work anywhere under 16,000 feet. Um, and for the most part, people sort of uh, behaved around that. But, uh, oh, I don't know. How, maybe I was just trying to block this out of my mind. But um, I'd say we were probably an hour left in the aircraft. And I was trying to encourage everyone to use a lavatory because, you know, they weren't going to be able to use one as we got closer to the ground. And certainly if we had a ground, any ground time, they wouldn't be able to. So I uh, looked in the lavatory to just make sure it was prepared. There was enough toilet tissue and this, it was, you know, relatively neat. A gentleman, well, I won't even say a gentleman, a man urinated had urinated everywhere, all over the floor, all over the toilet, everywhere. I think he did it in the sink. I mean, everywhere. Sm I knew it was urine because, well, uh, not to be any more unpleasant than I already am. Uh, thankfully, uh, our cleaning crew from the last aircraft left their cleaning supplies on the plane by accident. They never do. So I put some gloves on. And I did my due diligence and took care of the situation. I did not want to. I didn't take care of the floor because I wasn't about to do that. Um, but uh, yeah, so it was that was the, the low point of the day, really, was having to take care of that. Um, I actually had to ask our guests to treat the aircraft lavatories with the respect that they would give any restaurant or friend's home because there's 182 people on the airplane, well, 181. So blah, blah, blah. That was a low point of the day. But uh, 
there's my monologue. I am going to have to put clothes on in a minute because uh, I have no food with me and um, I need to uh, eat something. Um, so uh, I'm going to put some clothes on, go grab a bite to eat, and then crawl in bed with a sleeping pill or a um, melatonin or something just to be able to get to sleep because uh, I'm at the point where I'm I'm so tired I don't think I can sleep and I've been wasting your time for six minutes now with this monologue so I'm gonna see you later uh probably tomorrow morning and um yeah oh god tomorrow's so long <laughs> do, I, do I stop complaining ever oh my god all right I will see you probably tomorrow all right toodaloo oof how's this for lighting oh my gosh Good morning, guys. Hi, it's 4.09 in the morning. I told my coworkers I'd be down by 4.10, so this is good. Um, oh, so good morning. I hate a morning show, I'll tell you that. Uh, but uh, we're flying to Columbus this morning uh, and then back to Vegas, and we'll be done. It's a 12-hour duty day. I, I woke up a couple times last night but I did sleep for pretty much the entire layover. Um, I had a dream that we were, uh, that we timed out. <laughs> I had a dream that we timed out, that we time out after 15 hours. So uh, I'm, I'm really hoping that's not a, uh, a reality, but uh, it is 4, 4, 10 in the morning and it's already a group of people waiting for the shuttle. We don't have a set shuttle here, uh, so we have to just make it um, when we can. And uh, yeah, it's irritating. I would rather a scheduled shuttle that's dedicated to us, but all right, let me stop complaining. I will see you in the airport or in Columbus. All right, see you soon. It's a rainy day in LA. Good morning, guys. Hi, we're still in LA. Uh, it is 4.50 a.m. Our showtime is 5 o'clock. Um, we're on the aircraft on an 8321 Neo today, which is our newest and largest aircraft. Uh, I'm flying lead up in front. I think I, I'm not sure if I told you that during this trip. Um, I slept beautifully last night. Oh, my God. I had time for a salad last night from the lobby downstairs and then went right to bed. And I woke up at the last minute possible. Fantastic. Um, went down. The shuttle here at our short stay LA hotel is miserable. There's no preference for us. They don't hold us in any high regard. Um, and um, where most of our hotels, we are held, we are given preference to get on the shuttle, not here. And so we had to kind of like, it was like battling a cruise ship passenger list. I mean, it was just crazy. But we got on the shuttle, got here with plenty of time. I have a little breakfast smorgasbord set up. I'll show you. Some bacon from lemonade, coffee, some juice, and some yogurt from the hotel. That's my breakfast today. Going to Columbus with our Good amazing Hello. flight crew. Yes. I will, uh -huh. I awesome. I don't like you because you have better hair than I do. But <laughs> yeah, but you, you I, have uh, the Sean Connery. Oh, oh every day. Hold on. Are you on FaceTime? Hey, guys. Hi. Welcome to Columbus. So I just went to the bathroom. <laughs> I tell them everything. I come out and I see an angel, Marcy. Now, I can't show you a lanyard, it's Marcy. Hi, Marcy. <laughs> <laughs> Marcy's one of my favorite human beings and definitely probably the pinnacle of my favorite flight attendants in my company. And I'm not just saying that because she's in front of me. Uh, but uh, sh I, sh I step out and I walk up behind her and go, hey, lady. She turns around, we get a big hug, and she had just ordered me a chicken quesadilla. We're here. Isn't that nice? I she's my favorite. Uh, but uh, yes, yeah, so she's my chaser. I'm super excited. Uh, I do need a coffee though. Um, our last flight, super easy, nice chase, great chasers. Um, just hard. I, I I slept like seven and a half hours last night, but I was still it was still a very long flight, four hours, and then our flight to Vegas is gonna be another four hours. Uh, but I've got Marcy to keep me awake. All right, so I will see you in Las Vegas. Hey guys, hi, welcome back to Las Vegas. Uh, I think the last time I saw you, I was in Columbus meeting up with Marcy, who is probably one of my favorite human beings on the planet, certainly my favorite coworker, really. Um, it just was, it, the last leg was just like sitting with a friend for four hours, just chatting, 
laughing, telling stories, gossiping. Just really fantastic. Um, yeah, the flight was easy. Our passengers were fantastic. I rarely have problems with Columbus, so really, really good flight. The weather in Las Vegas is atrocious. We're sitting in the jump seat just before we land, and we hear the sound that sounds like a CVS bag being rifled through. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> we're like, what the heck's that noise? What is that noise? And uh, it was rain hitting the airplane sideways so loud as to make a hissing noise. It was bad. Um, the captain said that we might have had to uh, do a turn around Vegas because the weather was so bad, but uh, they landed the plane nice and easy. All good. Um, let's see, what else, what else? What else to tell you? I think that's it. It's about 4.30 in the afternoon. Um, I don't have to be back here until almost 11 o'clock the day after tomorrow. So I've got about uh, 36 hours off, very happy. And uh, yeah, that's it for this video. I will see you guys in the next one. All right, have a great night and fly safe, bye. Postscript. Oh, <laughs> it is pouring like a, oh, you can't even see me. Oh my God, it's horrible. Hey guys, hi, oh my God. So I don't know, look at this, I, I am, Soaked. I'm not quite sure when I'm going to put this in the video, but I feel like I have to because it's such a dramatic moment. Um, so in 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 the video, course of the video, I'm probably just getting off the plane in Vegas. I don't know. But um, when we were coming into Vegas, the, the, the hissing, it sounded like something like dangerous was happening on board. There was this hissing and this crinkly sound. My coworker and I were like looking at each other like, Marcy, what is that noise? It was rain hitting the side of the plane so hard that it was, I could, we could hear it through the fuselage. Well, I'm not sure if you can tell by the, by the video. I am saturated down to my underwear. My socks are wet. It's craziness. The rain here in Las Vegas. Now, um, I was walking through the parking lot and this very polite, very kind captain asked if I wanted a ride to my car. I'd forgotten how far away my, I had parked my car and I was like, no, it's okay, I'll make it. Boy, I really wish I had taken that ride. It was crazy. And all of a sudden, it's pretty much stopped raining all of a sudden. Crazy. Now, my fear and I, my, is that uh, when the, it rains this hard, there's serious flooding in the tunnels underneath Las Vegas and people die pretty much every time we have this kind of rain. So my heart goes out to those people, but I am, oh my God, my pants are stuck to me. I'm not sure if I'm even gonna include this in the video because it doesn't make any sense into the context of my video, but what? when does my video make any con uh, contextual sense? All right, um, drama, um, I will see you guys in a minute, wherever this, is in the video.